defibrillator monitor inspection record or PCI. The following is the organization information. The facility name, which is Hospital XYZ. The equipment control number, or ECN, which is also called the index number or asset tag. We have the test equipment that we are going to be using, which is the DNI Nevada Impulse 4000, followed by its serial number, as well as the inspecting agency, which is the biomedical department. Moving along to the qualitative tasks. These are pass or fail tasks, such as AD mode, is the following observations of the AD prompts both voice and text simulations such as shock advised, stay in clear, perform CPR and are all based on the factory default settings for the AD mode. We are also checking the chassis, housing mounts, the AC plug receptacles, line cord, strain reliefs, cables, connectors, paddle, electrodes, control switches, summary reports and the summary report prints the reports which display the correct time, date, the shock delivered, and the code marker events. We are also checking the batteries which self-discharge rate or the sealed lead acid batteries which have a low self-discharge rate. A new lead acid battery self-discharges approximately 0.1% of its capacity each day when stored at room temperature. In 10 days, a new lead acid battery loses approximately 1% of its capacity. Self discharge rate increases as the battery gets older. We also look at the indicators, the CRD display, the 1 millivolt step response, which is the diagnostic square wave, heart rate alarms. We will verify the proper operation of alarm tones and flashing LEDs. In addition, verify the operator's ability to suspend or silence the alarm for up to 90 seconds. We will also resolve any chronic problems such as alarms that have no use, often described as one that does not require the operator to take any action, called nuisance alarm, and complies with the alarm philosophy and principles of good alarm management. Audible signals, as well as charge tone, labeling, gel pads, internal discharge of stored energy, here we will verify the 200 joule stored energy by discharging the 200 joules into the defibrillator without a 50 ohm dummy test load. Next the printer will immediately print and let the BMET know that the discharge was successful. In addition, the operators also perform this test daily and it can be verified by checking the print strip along with the operator's current initials and date of test. We will also check the synchronizer and the recorder direct writer, which is also called the printer speed test. In the print speed test, we measure the paper speed accuracy at 100 millimeters per second and ensure the printer is functioning properly, such as no misalignments, misfeeds, paper jams, etc., as well as no damages to the print head. In addition, the this determines the clinician's ability to monitor the heart rates using the six second rule. What is the six second rule? All but very slow heart rates can be determined by counting the number of cycles that occur within six seconds and then multiplying that number by ten. With very slow bradycardias, counting the number of cycles within six seconds may not be enough. At the standard chart speed of 25 millimeters per second, 5.5 centimeter blocks span one second. That's 30 blocks in six seconds. So at a paper speed of 50 millimeters per second, 10 blocks span one second or 60 blocks for every six seconds. For convenience, most ECG charts mark off every 7.5 centimeters along the upper margin these marks correspond to a 3 second interval at a chart speed of 25 millimeters per second and a 1.5 second interval at a speed of 50 millimeters per second. For example, at a paper speed of 25 millimeters per second, 
a six second strip is selected between the black arrows. The number of heart cycles counted is seven. That is heart rate equals seven times ten or seventy beats per minute. Moving along to preventive maintenance tasks. Here are some of the preventive maintenance tasks. We will clean the exterior, clean the paddles, clean rollers, lubricate the paper drive, as well as replace the battery every two years. Quantitative testing. Here we will perform the ground resistance test using a safety analyzer and it should be 0.5 or 500 milliohms as well as chassis leakage current which should be less than 100 microamps. The delivered energy or output energy is the energy that is integral over time of an instant power output. Power is equal to voltage squared divided by resistance. This defibrillator test is calibrated by the energy discharged into a simulated patient load. Various settings as shown, such as 5, 10, 15, 20, 30, 50, 200, 300, 360 joules. The energy delivered must be within plus or minus 15% or 4 joules of the displaced setting, whichever is greater into a 50 ohm load. Next, energy after 60 seconds. Here we measure and record the maximum energy delivered, which is 360 joules after one minute of storage while operating on battery power only. This is a great indicator of a possible bad battery. Charge time. This is the time it takes to actually charge the defibrillator. From the minute we push the button until it sounds that it's ready, we will time that in seconds and it should be less than 15 seconds to charge. Tenth repeated max energy discharge. This test we measure and record the output energy of the tenth repeated discharge at 360 joules while operating on battery power only. So we're going to end up taking 10 consecutive shots. This test compares the voltage linearity at high programmable limits. In addition, it measures the time it takes for the defibrillator to charge to its max level, which is a great indicator of a possible bad battery as well. Synchronized operation or cardioversion. Cardioversion is shock delivered that is timed with the QRS complex. This synchronization avoids shock delivery during the relative refractory portion of the cardiac cycle when a shock could produce ventricular fibrillation. Verify that the sync markers appear as arrows over the R wave peaks on the display. T wave oversensing can lead to mismarking which leads to discharge during the heart's repolarization period or the T wave causing ventricular fibrillation. The sync delay or timing measures of less than 60 milliseconds on the analyzer is of the utmost importance. Why does cardioversion matter? Cardioversion may be a necessary procedure when drugs alone may not have been able to convert an arrhythmia to a normal heart rhythm. Cardioversion restores the normal heart rate and rhythm, allowing the heart to pump more effectively. The most common use of cardioversion is to treat atrial fibrillation or atrial flutter. But cardioversion may also be used to treat unstable supraventricular tachycardia, which could lead to ventricular fibrillation. ECG rate calibration. This measures the ECG performance of a simulated patient at both 60 and 120 beats per minute, plus or minus 5% or 5 beats per minute. Next, pacer rate. Pacer rate is the pacer output which can be measured using an oscilloscope set to DC coupled connected across a load resistor. The load resistor is a 100 ohm 5 watt or greater. The pacer output is a positive going pulse 40 plus or minus 2 millimeters duration with an amplitude of 
0.1 volt per milliamp of selected output. For example, 40 milliamps of selected output has an amplitude of 4 plus or minus 0.5 volts as displayed on the oscilloscope. If an external non-invasive pacer analyzer is being used, then follow the manufacturer's guidelines for measuring the frequencies and the output. Frequency response. This is the measure of performance of a simulated patient's waveforms. The first one is a 2 Hz square wave. It is a 1 millivolt amplitude at 2 Hz used for testing amplifier gain and damping, such as mechanical oscillations, noise, and AC currents by dissipation of energy. The next is 4 second pulse, which is also a 1 millivolt amplitude but at four second pulses used for testing frequency response or the stability of the input signal or pulse at varying frequencies. Next is sine waves at 0 0.05, 0 0.5, 1, 10, 25, 30, 40, 50, 60, 100, and 1 k hertz. These one millivolt amplitude sine waves are used for testing frequency response. The 60 hertz verifies the notch filter is working properly when the chart recorder prints at 1.5 millimeters or less. Next, the 2 hertz triangle waveform. This is a 1 millivolt amplitude at 2 hertz used for testing amplifier linearity. Lastly, we will check the 30, 60, 100, and 240 beats per minute or BPM simulated heartbeats or QRS waveforms. This is used for testing heart rate accuracy and alarm functioning. Additional tests could include atrial fibrillation, A flutter, ventricular fibrillation, or asystole. When checking gain, this is a linear operation. We will measure how well the waveform signal traces handle high frequency noises as well as amplitude sizes and shapes. The gain is measured in dB, therefore if doubling the dB, we will double the size of the AC waveform on the display. Next, linearity and range. Linearity is the connection of a regression line, or a straight line. Range is typically derived from linearity. Range implies that the method corresponds to the range between the two frequency response samples such as 0.5 Hz and 100 Hz, ideally, if the expected range is within tolerance. Sweep speed and linearity. Sweep speed measures how fast the waveform signal trace moves across the screen. We measure the sweep speed using a 1 kHz signal frequency. The period, usually denoted by time, is the length of time taken to measure one sweep cycle of time. For example, take one cycle and divide it by the frequency of 1k or 1000 Hz. This equals 0 .001 seconds or 1 millisecond sweep speed. Alarm delay. Here we will measure the amount of time it takes from initiating alarm on the analyzer until the time the alarm begins to sound on the defibrillator. This delay time should be less than 10 seconds. Recorder Direct Writer. This is the printer. We will perform the same tests except we will print it out on the printer. We will measure the gain and its tolerance within plus or minus 10 percent. We will also measure the linearity within plus or minus 10 percent. We will check the paper speed at 100 millimeters across five different ECG waveforms and that should be within plus or minus 2 percent. And we will print out each frequency response waveform for documentation purposes. Moving along, these tests are only required for acceptance or initial inspection tests only. Here we will measure the ECG lead leakage current. Here we will measure the simulated ECG current flowing from the patient through a load to ground 
or between other patient connections or devices using the electrical safety analyzer. As you can see, the tolerance for grounded is less than 10 microamps and 50 microamps for ungrounded. Moving along. ECG interlead leakage current. Here we measure the simulated ECG current flowing between the ECG leads. For example, LL left leg to RL right leg. And again, the tolerance is less than 10 microamps grounded or less than 50 microamps ungrounded. Next, ECG lead input isolation. Warning, during this test, a high voltage is applied and is present on the ECG leads, so keep your hands away from the electrical safety analyzer during this test. The ECG lead isolation test measures the simulated current between the patient when 115 volts AC, 1 milliamp, is applied to ground. That should be less than 20 microamps. Paddle leakage current. This test is performed for defibrillators using paddles, which are the traditional plastic style handles with a metal plate at the bottom. Basically, we are measuring chassis leakage current, which may flow during ECG testing with the paddles to ground passing to operator or patient. This testing also includes the circular wand style paddles used within open heart surgery. Tolerance is less than 100 microamps external or 50 microamps internal or inside the patient. Paddle interlead leakage current. This measures the simulated ECG current flowing between the paddle leads such as the right lead or the left lead paddle. Paddle input isolation. Here we are measuring the RF current that may flow during ECG testing with the paddles to an unexpected path such as a patient or an operator who has a pacemaker device. RF leakage should be less than 100 microamps external or 50 microamps internal paddle continuity. Here we are measuring continuity of the paddle leads to ensure integrity of the electrical circuit and its resistance to current flow. The ECG display or the resistance should be less than 0.15 ohms when measured with the ohmmeter from right to left paddle. Here we are measuring the delivered energy in joules over time of the instant power output. The energy delivered must be less than 50 joules as displayed on the monitor. Integral Output Tester. This test is performed for defibrillators using a simulated integral or component 50 ohm patient dummy load. Basically, we are measuring the complete test of the defibrillator's charge and discharge without removing paddles from the storage wells. Identical circuitry allows complete test of units configured with multifunction cables. Common mode rejection ratio. If a signal is applied equally to both inputs of an op-amp so that the differential input voltage is unaffected, the output should not be affected. In practice, changes in common mode voltage will produce changes in output. For example, V out equals G times V plus minus V minus, where G is the gain. So when both inputs are equal, the output display should be zero, represented by a flat line. Finally, we will enter any remarks and have the technician sign the form and date it.